I'm so happy to be here. My name is Gail Frederick. I'm the CTO of Heroku, and Heroku is the world's most beloved platform as a service. Now, before I get started, I need to tell you I am such a fangirl of Postman. I've been using Postman for as long as I can remember, and so I'm especially excited to be here with you today. At Salesforce, we like to start every conversation with gratitude. So I'd like to start by saying thank you so much to Postman for inviting me to Keynote. Thank you to Abhinav for kicking it off so strongly this morning. And thanks to you, the audience, for the time we're going to spend together today thinking about APIs. Today, we're going to, APIs are my favorite topic, by the way. <laughs> I do a lot of things at Heroku, but uh, APIs really make my heart sing. But today, we're going to talk about how to develop APIs that scale using modern cloud computing best practices, how to improve those APIs by collaborating, and how AI changes everything. But first, let me tell you just a little bit about Heroku. Who's used Heroku in the room? Out of curiosity, hands. OK, great, a lot of you. Uh, Heroku is a delightful PaaS, our platform as a service. We are dedicated to simplifying compute and data in the cloud. And we provide a developer experience that we think of as opinionated and magical. Now, by opinionated, I mean we believe that there is one right way of doing things. And by magical, we mean that we make that one right way very easy and beautiful to use. And that's all in service of your developer productivity. Now, I've heard plenty of startups pitching their VCs, we are going to become the Heroku of X. And when I hear that, I feel really proud for how enduring our developer experience has become. So why should you listen to what I think about APIs? Well. I want to tell you just a little bit about the scale of Heroku and Salesforce with regard to our APIs. Today on Heroku, our developers call the platform API about 73 million times a day in their daily lives. And overall, Heroku's compute platform processes about 60 billion requests per day on behalf of our customers all around the world. And over at Salesforce, Salesforce developers call APIs a mind-numbing six and a half billion times a day. I think that's a really big number, so I double and triple checked, it, and that number's true. And also, you might have heard Abhinav say that today Salesforce has the most popular collection in Postman's public API network with about 200,000 forks. So APIs mean a lot over here at Salesforce. OK, today, as API developers, the fundamental shift that I want you to make is I want you to think about your APIs as living, breathing, growing, changing cloud computing systems. And when I say system, I mean the hardware, the software, and I also mean you. You are part of the system. The age of deploying APIs as one endpoint with one backing store is long over. Your API, as I'm sure you know, is more complex than ever. So well, what do you need to do? Well, first you need to manage it like a proper cloud computing system. And then you need to collaborate in context with humans and with systems, and I'll define that for you, to improve your API. And then finally, you have to be using AI assistance. They scale your developer productivity. As we're thinking about API development at scale, I wanted to tell you a quick story about Heroku customer Health Sherpa. Now, Health Sherpa is a healthcare technology company, and last fall, they were responsible for enrolling almost 40% of US subscribers to federal subsidized health insurance. Now, think for a minute about health insurance. Think about your health insurance provider's website. Super complicated. Healthcare software is some of the oldest software there is. So now imagine this traffic pattern. There's an enrollment deadline. The traffic pattern is spiky, difficult to predict on the way to the peak. And I'm so proud to say that on Heroku, Health Sherpa was able to sustain 1,200 requests per second and almost 30,000 requests per second between their Postgres database and their web app, with, as you can see, a very short latency. 
HealthSherpa's product enrolled 6.5 million subscribers in federal subsidized healthcare, and we estimate that that saves about 4,000 lives. And so we have an expression for this at Salesforce. Thinking about Heroku's uh, HealthSherpa's use case and using Heroku's platform to meet the demands of open enrollment for a whole country's healthcare system, we call that doing well and doing good. Okay. Let's nerd out a little bit about APIs. Uh, who has heard of 12-factor? Great. 12-factor are principles, are best practices for deploying software that runs well in the cloud. And by software, I mean APIs or any other SaaS product. Heroku invented these principles in the beginning of our journey as a company. And I'm excited to tell you that we're refreshing these principles using the experience of our actual users pushing the boundaries of cloud compute at scale on our platform. Now, there are lessons here for API development, and this is what I want to talk to you about today. So let's take a look at a few of these factors. OK, first factor, one app, one code base tracked in version control. And fourth factor, backing services. Treat your backing services as attached resources. Now think about how you deploy your APIs. Our customers and API developers used to deploy this way. One app, one code base, one backing store. You can think of that model as one star in the sky. Now, we all know that's an oversimplified model and not at all what we see in today's cloud computing platforms. I see on Heroku API developers in service of one logical API deploying multiple apps several different kinds of backing stores, event buses, internal services, and even machine learning models. API developers want to deploy these, operate them as a unit. I'm starting to think of this way of deploying software as a constellation. So moving away from one app towards a constellation of cloud services that work together in service of your API. And by the way, you, the API developer, are at the very center of this constellation. You have a difficult job. Your job is to deploy and deliver the individual components and then manage the system holistically. So I want you to move from thinking about the star to thinking about the constellation. And here, I think the stakes are so high. Your API is the literal digital embodiment of your business. OK, let's look at the next factor. Dependencies. Declare and isolate your dependencies. Now, in that constellation, it can be very difficult to manage all of the dependencies of all of the components of your system, especially from a security and compliance mindset. And even when your API is a proper cloud service, your customer is still going to ask you to prove the security and compliance of your offering. This is collaborating in context with systems. So Heroku believes in a technology called SBOM, Software Bill of Materials. And we believe in this technology so much that we're baking it into the next version of our platform. SBOM improves this dependencies factor, declare and isolate your dependencies. And SBOM, if you haven't seen one, is just a machine-readable text file. And it lists every library that your components are using along with a lot of metadata about those components. What are their versions? Where is their source code? What is the license it's shared under? Uh, all kinds of metadata. And an SBOM has become a very key technology for software supply chain security, because it allows you to pass this information to your customer and their services to prove the origin of your system, and increasingly, there's an ecosystem of providers adding value to these SBOMs and helping your customers uh, understand what's in your system and the security of their and your software supply chain. And the very best part about SBOMs, in my point of view, is that they're not artisanally created. They're generated as artifacts at every build. OK, fifth factor, strictly separate build, release, and run phases. Now, I think this one is still the right principle, but 12-factor doesn't take a position about if the change that you're about to build, release, and run is correct, or if it's even the next right change for your API and your business. 
Now we're talking about collaboration in context with your users. So on the Heroku platform, my favorite feature is review apps. A review app is just a really simple pipeline. It lets you take a PR, so code that hasn't even been merged yet, build it, run it, deploy it to the cloud, and you end up with a nice lightweight artifact that you can hand to your stakeholders and you can say, hey, is this what you expected? How does my feature work? How should I change it? I think API collaboration is really difficult today. Uh, who here uh, produces an, an API that your partners consume? Okay. So half of you, about half of you. Now think about your stakeholder list as API producers. On your own team, you have engineering and product and business. And then you, uh, you have consumers, and you probably have a lot of those, which is why you're using shared workspaces. Each of those consumers has product and engineering and business. And for some of you, I bet the internet at large is one of your API stakeholders. So what I love about both review apps and what we saw earlier about the collaboration features on Postman is having that human-to-human -human conversation, but tightly connected to the technology. So review apps are great because you're building a literal PR and handing an artifact around. Also, what Postman has is great because you can see a comment thread right next to that variable that you're talking about. I think Quick feedback loops are essential when you're improving an API and collaborating with people. And I also believe onus on the developer to be bilingual. Because you understand the technology, it is also your responsibility to translate that technology into business terms that your stakeholders outside engineering can understand. Okay. Uh, as of November 2023, I admit I wasn't such an expert in generative AI, but I think the whole world has changed since then. And it's amazing to me how much of our daily lives are entwined with AI, especially generative AI. If you are not using AI in your daily work today, you need to start using AI in your daily work today. All of your competitors are using generative AI, and they will pass you by. I want to give you my boss's perspective and then my perspective on Gen AI. Uh, my boss has a pretty uh, entertaining perspective. Uh, he's the CEO of Heroku. His name is Bob Wise. And he likes to say having an AI assistant is like having infinite interns. So much content is being produced. And it's up to you as the human user to characterize that output and make sure that it's fit for service. And I think we all know that's especially true when it's code writing that you're doing with an assistant. I believe, and Heroku believes, that the next wave of generative AI is going to be operational. I want Heroku's AI to solve your daily problems on our platform. And so when I think about the PostBot AI features that were just demoed, PostBot can create test cases for you. It can generate documentation. It can even help you visualize the output from a running API. We saw as a geographic map. You can also do it in chart or table form. Uh, I think those are really practical problems that AI can solve. So on Heroku's platform, we're going to use AI, thinking about our constellation of services and databases that comprise your API. We're going to use AI to scale and to tune that constellation. We're going to use AI to find and fix performance issues across the components of your system. And we're going to use it to help you trace errors across your whole distributed system. We are going to have a lot more to say about AI soon. And I encourage you to watch this space. OK. In summary, I want you to think to move from thinking about the star to thinking about the constellation of everything you do in the cloud in support of your API. I want you to collaborate both system to system using technologies like SBOMs and person to person assisted by technology in really tight feedback loops where you're talking to all of your stakeholders and able to move quickly based on your feedback. And then I want you to remember that you have to be using generative AI. It is a massive improvement in productivity for your developer teams. And you need to also make sure that you're curating that effectively for quality. And honestly, aren't we so lucky to have a tool like Postman to help us do all of this? 
Thank you so much for your time today. I hope to see you later at PostCon. Thank you.